Hey guys, thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of Study Crypto. Today, we're going to talk about WAND Investments, a brand new protocol in DeFi has not even launched yet. Very promising, very interesting, and I think it may just set a standard in DeFi, to be quite honest with you. We're going to get into it, but... Before we do so, please do us a big favor, hit that like button as well as that subscribe button if you haven't already, and ding that notification bell as well if you find the info that we bring you of value. Okay, guys, so let's get into it. Wand Investments. What I'm going to say initially, this is going to be a long one because there's a lot of information to go over. Uh, Ultimately, I'm going to say this. I like the project. The bottom line is they have a really, really good roadmap. They have a structure for their DeFi strategy involving low, medium, and high risk investments that kind of is all backed by a quasi stable coin. And most importantly, to, in my opinion, they have a reward system that rewards you in USDC, which is a stable coin. You can be, be rewarded in USDC. All of that sounds great. I really like this protocol. I'm just putting that out front because this is going to be a long one because I'm going to go into a lot of different pieces here. So let's get into it. The introduction. I'm just going to read along so we can get through this. So uh, the DeFi space is arguably the place where the finance of the future is being built. It empowers any investor to choose precisely in which projects he or she will invest, no matter how big or small. However, This easy access to financial products has led to some issues. We know those issues, guys. We've seen them everywhere if you've been in this DeFi place. Rug pulls everywhere. 95% of the projects that get talked about and get invested into are rug pulls or just fall apart or not sustainable. Uh, People with little financial education have joined high-risk projects. Some projects have made great promises, followed by disappointing actions and highly volatile prices have led to poor emotion-led actions. And what I didn't mention, I need to mention, as always, we are not financial advisors. This is not financial advice. This is only for educational purposes only and entertainment purposes. Do your own research. Okay. Now, Wand Investments is here to make DeFi not only attractive, but also safe for all investors. We offer two tokens with different purposes to meet needs of different profiles. Our goal is to become the go-to place for people who, all around the world, want to invest their money somewhere, come back sometime later, and withdraw it with significant gains. All right, let's take a look at the model. I'm going to skip reading that piece up above, but like I said, they're into low-risk and medium-risk and some high-risk strategies with proper portions that try to maintain risk management. But I really like these flow charts they have so you can get an idea of how this thing works. So the protocol sells Scepter, okay, Scepter. The protocol is going to sell Scepter at a price above floor and then that mints the wand. So investors, you and I, buy Scepter. Next, Scepter floor price increases steadily because of it being bought. Now, also keep in mind, there's a wand token that's also minted, but we're going we're gonna to get there. So from here, Scepter floor price increases steadily. We have a couple of different strategies from this point. So secondly, what you could do is you could burn your Scepter to get Baton. Okay, Scepter and wand are redeemed by the protocol. Baton is minted. So if you redeem your Baton, if we go here... Then you can receive USDC. That's one strategy once you've purchased your scepter. Another strategy is once you get your scepter, you can sell the scepter and the protocol sells the scepter at a price floor and redeems wand. And that will generate you 
USDC also. Okay. Next, again, if you buy the scepter, the floor price increases. Then let's say you burn the scepter, you get the baton token. If you hold on to the baton, you can hold and earn weekly airdrops. As you collect these airdrops, you receive USDC. And then finally, if the investor, you and I, buys Scepter. Well, I'm sorry, those are three strategies. Those are three strategies that you have with the Scepter, with this uh, pr project, okay? Um, so, so those are three core strategies, but we'll, there's a lot more to this. Okay, the goal is everything winds up at USDC. That's what I like here. Everything winds up at USDC. Okay, now guys, let's get into the tokens. Our model is based on a three token system. The first two are Scepter and Baton. They're meant for the investor, while the third wand will be the protocol's use only. It's very interesting the way they do this. Now, Scepter is the token that you and I will buy. Uh, it's 100% backed by safe assets like stable coins and native tokens. Now let's, let's look at the flowchart, how this works. Investor buys Scepter from the protocol. Scepter price grows continuously as people buy. Then investor burns Scepter to receive their baton. Okay, Scepter again, and when investor sells Scepter to receive their USDT, there is a 10-day lockup period. Keep that in mind. Why is that? It's a 10-day lockup period so they can move around investments in order to provide you with your return. That gives them time to perform their strategies to get you your return. Now, let's go back here. Investor buys Scepter from Protocol. Now, Protocol earned money. 95% goes to the Scepter Treasury, okay? 5% to the Dev Wallet. Now, next, the Treasury is reinvested to grow and increase the floor price, okay? And lastly, the Treasury is fed by other investors coming in and leaving the protocol. When investors come in and leave the protocol, they get paid out. But once they've entered, they've added value to the protocol, okay? Now, let's, let's look at how Baton. Baton is what we're going to really earn our yields on, okay? Baton is earned by burning the scepter. Like scepter, its treasury is meant to grow continuously thanks to our investments and the inflow coming from the burning of scepter. The larger the treasury, the bigger the weekly airdrops for baton holders. Baton holders receive weekly USDC airdrops, which are automatically distributed through our smart contracts. They're giving out USDC. This is a big deal. That's a stable coin. That's real money, okay, that they're offering, that they're giving out through this strategy. This is one of the reasons why I like it a lot. So let's look at the flow chart. Investors burn scepter and receive baton, okay? We're looking at a deeper, another perspective of the strategy. Now, invest, again, we buy the scepter, we burn, investors burn the scepter, you buy the scepter, you burn the scepter, then you get the baton. Investor holds baton and receives the weekly airdrops, and again, the investor receives rewards, like we said before, in USDC, which is a stable coin pegged to the U.S. dollar. Also, when the investor sells Baton, they also receive USDC. So the point here is you buy that scepter and either you get the Baton airdrops, which gives you USDC, or you take the scepter and sell it for Baton and then the investor receives USDC. Both wonderful ideas. Next. The Baton Treasury has multiple sources. Burnt Scepter, Scepter Treasury Growth, and Wand Taxes. 
Bataan Treasury is invested to grow and reward Bataan holders. Rewards are used to distribute airdrops and redeem Bataan. Now, WAND. Let's talk about the third and final token of this strategy. Again, this is a three-token protocol. The first two are what we get. The third is what the, what the protocol uses to create investments that, that reward us, okay, which is the WAND. Now, WAND is the unstaked version of Scepter, and there are always as many WAND as Scepter tokens, Wand, wand are only used by the protocol as collateral to increase the treasury. So there's a one-to-one -one ratio between scepter and wand. Scepter is what you get. Wand is what the treasury gets to do, deploy its investing strategies. So, for example, the investor buys scepter. The protocol mints one scepter and one wand. We have two directions we go with this. Either direction one. The investor holds the scepter. Investor sells scepter back to the protocol. Protocol withdraws and redeems wand, meaning redeems the wand out of whatever strategy they're doing. Next, protocol uses the wand as collateral, collateral on a lending platform. A lending platform, like many of us know, what either Ave or uh, I don't know Trader Joe or you know, Uniswap or SushiSwap or any of the major billion dollar platforms where you can earn yields by trading and, and uh, uh, doing liquidity pool tokens and so forth. So that's what they're doing here. The, the protocol uses the wand as collateral on a lending platform. Now, wand can be sw uh, swapped to Scepter one for one like Scepter. Wand's value increases steadily. There are always as many scepter as there are wand. They're pegged one to one, guys, one to one. If wand is liquidated, its owner can exchange it one to one for scepter. Now, Treasury borrows stable coins at 10 to 15% APR and invests that at 20 to 50. This is one of their financial low risk strategies, right? Their treasury is borrowing stable coins with, with, the, with the scepter you bought, they've minted a wand, and now they are borrowing stable coins at 10 to 15% and investing it at 10, 20 to 50%. That's giving them a 10 to what 35% APR just on that low risk. Right? Like that's just one of the low risk ways they reward you. The net difference is used to support Scepter Treasury. Stead and it steadily increases Scepter price over time. Okay? Next. The Treasury is divided into three parts as well the Scepter Treasury, the Baton Treasury, and the Risk Treasury. The Scepter Treasury is used to calculate Scepter's floor price and is used to back each token. It is invested and its rewards are partly reinvested in the same treasury, thus increasing the Scepter price floor and partly moved to the Baton Treasury. The Baton Treasury is invested and its rewards are partly reinvested to grow further and benefit the holder even more over time and partly airdrop to, to, to holders. The WAND token, which is the protocols token, is used as collateral, benefits this secondary, be benefits this second treasury. So those are two treasuries that they have. Let's skip to the risk treasury. The risk treasury will be a small percentage taken from the other treasuries. Again, they're putting only a small amount into risky stuff, which is nice, like moonshots and crazy stuff, okay? It will be invested in riskier investments. The rewards from this treasury will be split between the risk treasury to fund other bold investments. The scepter treasury to increase the scepter price floor and the Bataan Treasury to increase the airdrops of Bataan holders. 
Unlike other treasuries, the risk treasury is not meant to be secured by a multi-sig wallet because it may require quick reactions to the market in order to be efficient. So this treasury is not controlled by a multi-sig. It is the smallest treasury wallet of them all, while the other treasuries, those baton and the scepter, which are the primary treasuries, which is where the majority of our funds will be, will have multi-sig, which is for our benefit, for our safety, it helps reduce theft. I like that. However, it will be a much small, the risk treasury, it will be a much smaller treasury than the other two, and anyone accessing it will be KYC'd. So let's look at the strategy. Investors buying Scepter, tax on early selling. So if you sell it early, you get taxed. That helps feed all the long-term investors. Again, this is a long-term investing strategy. Next, Scepter Treasury does low risk investments. The rewards from those low risk investments are distributed as such. 66% reinvested, 33% sent to Bataan Treasury, and the goal is to increase Scepter floor price. Now, investors burning and selling Scepter, okay? Investors burning and selling the Scepter. Okay, that's, that's how that's re redistributed. Now, let's go from the low risk investment strategy to the risk treasury. This is medium to high risk strategies, okay? Their reward distribution is as follows. 33% reinvested, 33% 33% goes to Scepter Treasury, and another 33%, the final 33%, to the Bataan Treasury. Now, the goal of this is obvious, to seize high growth opportunities fast and without risking the scepter and baton treasuries. So the idea is the high risk portion, if this happens to fail or take some losses, the other treasuries and the other low risk investments aren't harmed. I like that. Next, investors burning scepter wand as collateral, scepter treasury rewards. Let me say that again. Investors burning scepter receive wand as collateral, well, has wand as collateral, and scepter treasury rewards. Okay, that's the baton treasury, which is a low risk investment. Now, what comes out of that in the low risk investments? Airdrops to baton holders, investors redeeming baton. So for those that are burning baton, burning scepter, they're getting their baton out of what's happening in the low risk investment portion. And for those that are holding scepter, they're getting their baton airdrops. Now, with the low risk investments, how are those rewards distributed? 45% are reinvested, 45% as airdrops to the baton holders. Again, that's you and I. That's people who either get airdrops from holding Scepter or have burned their Scepter for Baton, and 10% to devs and marketing wallets. Now, the goal here is to distribute airdrops to Baton holders. And again, remember guys, they're distributing USDC. They're, these, these rewards are being distributed as USDC from the Baton. You get, you, you get stable coins, which is so awesome. Now, Next, one of the innovations of the model is the use of 100% backed tokens, WAND, as collateral to increase the treasury value. We will use WAND on our lending platform and on partners' lending platforms. We will use WAND, who is equal to the scepter. Again, we already ran over this one-to-one. -one. Now, because it will increase in value, we will only borrow stable coins against it the risk of liquidation is close to zero because they're borrowing stable coins against this wand because the wand is going to go up in value as people buy scepter. That means that the value of wand goes up while the stable coins they borrow will stay steady. 
Okay, it's it. So basically, the what they'll owe for the stable coins they borrowed will decrease less and less in proportion to the value of the bond, which is smart. Now, there's a governance aspect as well. Um, I'm not going to get into that right now because I don't think most of you guys care too much about that. You can read this on your own time because the video is getting long. Um, let's see here. Um, they have the contracts. There was something else I wanted to show you guys that's really good languaging at the end of this. I just wanted to share with you. Um, so, okay, so right here, our commitment to a better DeFi. Investors lost money when time failed and overruled Dow votes. We all know about that, right? Investors have lost money since November at the end of the Dow's era. Investors have earned money on some nodes and seen others fail. There is a common pattern, overpromising to underdeliver. Market something as sustainable when it clearly isn't, offering a token that lacks utility. We will skillfully execute a conservative management strategy to make WAND a safe investment place for Scepter and Baton holders alike. You can expect reasonably high APYs. We're neither a bank, nor depository, nor a moon boys. That will have your investments in mind at all times since your interest and our interest are the same. Indeed, the team will only be paid based upon protocol's results, so our interests are fully aligned. Let's skip down here. We will KYC docs to the Governance Council and include them in the multi-sig before launch and perform an audit of our code after launch. So they're doing KYC and full docs before launch and they're doing an audit right after they launch. Great signs right here. Any person having direct access to the treasury and or the code will be KYC'd and docs before gaining such access. Your money, your choice. WAND will actively manage the investor's money through the treasury. It is therefore a no-brainer that the investors will have a strong say in the investment choices, the roadmap, and the team's work. We expect regular discussions, debates, and votes on these different topics. Okay, um, so this is just goes into the governance and the so forth. They have an NFT thing. Pre-launch contributors will be rewarded with whitelist spots. So you may be interested in getting involved with that. Reach out to me or the team regarding that. Uh, let's see what else. In their conclusion, instead of wag me, I like this. Sustainability going to make it, not WGMI. SGMI, sustainability going to make it. DeFi is a wonderful innovation that offers so many possibilities. Countless projects have been launched, including many forks with variable results. Recently, many have marketed the moon and delivered net losses. While investors with enough time, money, and training can make huge profits, it is also possible to lose a lot of money. Investors in many own forks have suffered this dearly. I know I'm one of them. This is where they come in. We offer a well-managed treasury and a protocol designed for token price appreciation. At WAND, everything is done to increase the value of Scepter and the airdrops for baton holders. Okay, and I like this. We are sustainable, gonna make it. Wag me is dead, long live, smag me, I guess. Uh, whatever you want to say that. Uh, but that's pretty much it. All right, guys, that, this was a long one. My conclusion is this. This is a protocol to look out for. Um, they have one of the most detailed docs I've seen, uh, white papers I've seen. The team is going to be fully docs, fully KYC'd before they even launch. And uh, they're going to have um, the multi-sig as well. Nothing but positive things. Their perspective, their breakdown. They have a unique white paper, not a copy and paste. This was very well thought out, very well structured, and broke down a lot of their intricacies. Their presentation is honestly second to none that I've personally seen. So I'm very bullish on this project. On the study score out of 1 to 40, I... Um, 
Now, again, if they're, it's hard to say because their docs aren't out and their KYC isn't out just yet. But out of 1 to 40, again, 40 being absolutely excellent, 1 being trash, I would put these guys about 30-something based upon what I've read so far. And if they once they launch, if they follow through with the KYC and the docs and everything else. Um, so I'm really excited to see this project take off. I'm going to participate in this. Um, you know, obviously do your own research. This is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. All right. So that's pretty much it, guys. Let me know what you think. I'm going to have all the links in just in the description. Um, let me know what you think about this one. This is a long term play with sounds like some responsible people. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Hit that like button, please, please, please. We really need that. And please hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell if you haven't already, if you appreciate the content. Thanks so much, guys. Happy investing. Hope to see you all in the top. Talk to you soon. Hey guys, thanks so much again for viewing our wonderful video and please don't forget to hit the like button and the subscribe button if you found value in this and please ding the notification bell as well. Thanks so much, see you next time.